is, we'll join together in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance Egypt to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for, which, for it which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, <laughs> with liberty, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Well, thank it's you very much. There, Matt. There's Amanda. I, I appreciate that go. expression of our democracy and freedom that we all share. Freedom from Corona. <laughs> At this time, if we if we could just take turns and indicate by stating our name who's here today, um, I'll start. Matthew Weiss is present. Anyone else can go? Karen Laraka Fells. Oh, all around the Brady Bunch style. Alice yeah. Joslow. <laughs> and I guess we only have two people. Oh, I think Amanda's muted. Uh, and there we go, Amanda. Oh, no, let's do it again. <laughs> okay, turn out beam of the thing. I think I can hear you now, Amanda. Oh, good. Amanda's muted. I know, that's scary. <laughs> Kathy, you have everyone? Shani. Hey, Shani. There we go. So I'm going to assume Kathy has all the attendees because my screen doesn't view all the people that have logged on. And can Karen DeTore tell me if she's here? If so, we can proceed with Maddie and Karen DeTore's portion of our meeting. Karen's not here yet. Yeah, okay. she wasn't able to get in. I just resent her, resent her the invite and texted her that she, that I did. Maddie, you change your background all the time. Yes, I do. Now you're like in space. I can be the one that I've been in a lot lately is Leslie Nope's office for Parks and Recreation. <laughs> well, that's cute. I love that. <laughs> what about the one that like you become a potato? Oh, I don't know about that one. Bet you too. Um, He's texting me back. Not yet. Not yet. If I send her mine, is that going to be a problem? Because it's individual, right? I think it's individual in this one. Is there a different email that I should send it to? I sent her to the um, sent it to the village of Ossining. Her name. I mean, that's that's Ossining. that's the one. Um, yeah. Oh, she's typing. Hang on. Well, if there are any members of the public present who would like to make a comment at this time, we can accommodate that. If not, Maddie, by way of introduction, I will let everyone know that you are a former member of the Board of Trustees for the Library. Maddie Zaches is presently the Assistant Village Manager for the Village of Ossining. She works with the Village Manager, Karen DeTore, who is trying to get on as we speak. So Maddie, uh, would you be comfortable just uh, starting and telling us what the background is for the idea of exempting from local library taxes, the tax on village water? I would be happy to. Um, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, so here's the scoop. Um, for those of us who were on the board um, several years ago, um, this may be familiar. Um, Lucinda, Cecilia, yeah. Matt, and Alice, I'm looking at you. Um, <laughs> But basically what we have here in Ossining is we have a water plant and a series of, of properties that it sits on. Um, John, I'm on a meeting right now. Many of which are in the unincorporated part of the town um, because it's a village owned site on unincorporated town owned property, we have to pay taxes or because it's in the, the unincorporated town, we have to pay taxes. Um, so basically the taxes for um, those properties 
are paid out of the village water fund. So it's separate from your tax bill. It's, it's basically a big fund where all of those payments go into, and then that defines the water rate. So if taxes um, on the water plant are higher, the water rate will be lower and vice versa. Hold on one second. Um, Karen LaRocca, she is saying she can't use my invitation either and she still hasn't gotten one. So. I am going to try to, I can't text it to her, but I'm going to try to send it a different way by email okay. right now. Um, okay, so um, folks who live in the village of Ossining and in unincorporated Ossining, unless they're on well service, all get water from the village's water filtration plant. Um, and so what you may have heard, even if you don't live in one of those two places, obviously the, the library and school district cover a small part of the town of Newcastle, a small part of the town of Yorktown, and then a part of the village of Briarcliff um, as well. So none of those places actually receive the water. So um, if you've heard, we are planning in the village to build basically a new water treatment plant. So um, they're still in the design phase, they're still going through the Department of Health, but it's estimated to be an additional $70 million um, addition onto the, the system. So just, just like a house, right? If you made a 70 million addition uh, to your house, your taxes would obviously go up significantly. Um, such is the investment in, in the water treatment plant. So if $70 million worth of value is being added, um, the taxes are gonna go up significantly. Um, that is bad news. Um, it's not just bad news for the village, it's bad news for everybody who needs water from the village. Because as I explained, the taxes are going to be paid out of the water fund which means everyone's physical water is going to cost significantly more. Um, Kathy, I think had sent around to all of you um, a couple of spreadsheets as well as a memo by way of analysis that I had done for the school district. Um, the school district has uh, seven members on its board similar to the OPL. Uh, we've already met with two of them. Uh, we're waiting to meet with a third. Um, again, this is something that they're somewhat familiar with because you know this process got started in 2016. Um, and I, you know, I don't know what the issue was on the school end at that time, but they just weren't able to, to get it done in time. Um, again, if you're a homeowner here, you might be familiar um, in terms of getting the, the assessment role completed, there is a, a hard stop for, for changes to be made. Um, and so we are approaching that hard stop um, in, in the coming weeks. So we're hopeful that we can get this done. Um, what it would require is a resolution of support from all three taxing entities. It's already exempt by Westchester County. So the town would need to exempt the properties from the town's portion of the tax bill. The school would need to exempt the property from the school's portion of the tax bill, which again is, is by far the largest part, about 65%. And then the library would also need to do the same. Um, the library, um, by way of example, is probably about one to one and a half percent of, of the average person's tax bill. Um, so that is the request. Um, the way that we're sort of looking at this is also an equity issue. Um, the analysis that I had done initially um, had five different homes um, going up from 250,000 to 750,000 um, to try to demonstrate how the water bills percentage of the home value um, is obviously much higher on lower income properties, many of which are village of Ossining properties. So um, this problem is exacerbated for folks who live in the lower value properties, which is why this is especially important to get done now. Um, and so I, I ask, you know, if there are any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. Um, and I, I leave it to you. So is the expectation that this will have no impact on the cost for the library to buy water from the village when we needed to augment our heating system? So the library already does pay for, for water through the village, as Matt explains. Um, but as I said at the beginning, the, the higher the tax, it, it's very difficult because if, if instead of the village building this new system, it was IBM or something like that, if it was a private uh, rate payer, this would be a fantastic thing, right? Because now you're getting $70 million worth of value you know, injected into, into the assessment role and it's gonna bring down taxes for everybody and it's just gonna be a win-win. Um, unfortunately, because this is municipal money, it, it is sort of hurting everyone just in a different part of their pocket. Um, so when Matt talks about the rate that the library's paying, if the village does have to pay taxes, the library's rate that they pay for water will in fact go up. Uh -huh. And that'll be a market rate. 
we we don't know what what or how much that'll go up. Well, I mean the the conservative projections going forward and and have they have been for the past couple of years is about a five percent increase a year and that's to keep up with maintenance debt service so on and so forth um so that's pretty much industry standard and and to be expected um if you look at the spreadsheet that i sent around um if this plant comes online and the value is not exempted um everyone including the library is going to be seeing about a 40 percent cumulative um, increase over that five-year period as opposed to a, a much more modest uh, much much closer to the 5% um, annual increase, which is about 20% uh, cumulative. So it's about twice. Right. So the, this 5% uh, projected increase is the cost um, for, um, that we pay for getting water. It's exactly. basically a usage. Uh, it's not a tax. It's how much you use is how much you pay. Precisely. And I see that um, Manager DeTore also just, just joined us. So. Um, Karen, I, I just basically went through sort of the history and the ask and sort of walked through the spreadsheets a little bit. Um, I touched a little bit on the equity issue. I don't know if you want to sort of underscore that at all. I, sorry about this. I'm having some technical difficulties today, but um, uh, I think that um, the issue really is uh, that if we want to preserve um, and make sure that we're building for infrastructure with our new water system. Um, exemption really works in everybody's favor because it is the, the surest way that we can keep the water slower. Um, if we're taxed, it's, it's, it's more problematic. We'll see significant increases, particularly for Austin Village residents. Um, and, and that will have an impact on, on probably those with with lowest impact, um, income. So when we've done the analysis, this does seem to be uh, per um, uh, assistant village manager Zahaj's explanation, the, the fair and equitable route to go. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from board members at this time? Um, Karen? I, I, I just need to understand why is it now that we're doing this? I must have missed this in the beginning. Sure. Um, so back in 2000, I believe it was 2016, um, the then village manager had approached the library board because they had been working on this with, again, the school district and with the town at the time. Um, I believe that what happened, and I, you know, I, I was not you know, present in the room except for just as the seat you're in, Amanda, as being a, a library trustee. Um, but basically what I believe happened at the time was the school district thought that the impact on homes in Newcastle and in Yorktown was going to be exacerbated, um, which is why they were saying, well, they're not getting the benefit of the water. Why should they get an, an, a slight uptick to their taxes? Um, the library board at the time um, realized that you know, it, it was well worth it and continued upon anyway. Um, when we look at it now, we believe that perhaps the, the impact on Newcastle and Yorktown had not um, been calculated properly. Um, so if you go into the spreadsheets that Kathy had sent over, you see how um, there are five columns across that demonstrate each, each different property. Um, because of the fact that Yorktown and Newcastle have an equalization rate, which I'm, I'm thinking maybe wasn't properly accounted for the first time this was analyzed, um, it looked as though the impact was, was different. But truly, um, what it does come down to is, yes, they're going to be paying, I think it's $11 at the most more per year in their school taxes, and then a dollar maybe in their library taxes. Um, and, you know, that's, that, that is true. That is, that is real money. It is $12. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, we think as, as elected trustee is that, that the onus is on you to, to look more at, at the equity for the larger population affected. Okay, this has nothing to do with the Sunshine Home development and that whole part of um, the Newcastle Ossining waterline there. It, it doesn't have anything to do with it. I mean, I know that they had asked the village for water in the past. Um, I don't believe that conversation is active and that certainly has nothing to do with this conversation. Okay, yep. just to be sure about that. Thank you. Sure. So Maddie or Karen, at this time, how, what is the plan to finance this? Is it a, a bond will be floated or taxes will be increased? Do you have any idea? Okay. Um, if, we're, yeah. if we're talking about the, the water treatment plant, it would, um, it would be financed through um, a bond, um, partially through 
the water fund and we are uh, soliciting um, and going after several different grants. Oh. But, but again, um, even with, with the cost of, of the bond and, and the debt service and all that, um, that's all gonna be contained within the increase to the water rate, not to your property taxes. Mm -hmm. um, correct, that's a good point. Um, this, this comes out of the water fund, not uh, your property. So it won't affect property taxes. It will affect, um, it will affect the uh, water rate of charge. Where it affects property taxes, is if now the plant is reassessed at a much higher value and it's not just the plant, it's other um, properties that have to do with our water system that are located in the town of Austin. If those are now assessed much higher, considerably higher than they are now, that will um, affect um, uh, more directly, uh, uh, that will affect the water rate more directly. So again, that's where you might see through that abatement a slight increase in your in your property taxes as as the charts that um, Ms. Zahaj has provided um, exemplify. So as I understand the way you presented this, it, there's really only one reasonable consideration and that would be as the resolution reads to exempt from local library taxes. I'm not sure, I, I need you to help me with the phrasing because I'm not sure the way the resolutions worded that I understand it completely. It reads approval of exemption from library from local library taxes for village water properties. Mm -hmm. So we're exempting the taxes from the local library properties. Right. So basically what will happen is the, the warrant stays the same, right? The library still collects to the penny exactly the same amount of money that they otherwise would have. It just makes the pool to collect that money slightly smaller, which is why the tax rate is going to go up ever so slightly for everybody else in the pool. Now the village is pulling out of the pool, so the pool is getting a little bit smaller. Um, so basically we can get you a, a list of the block and lot um, numbers. So I, I don't know, had you planned to do the resolution today or what was the, what was the plan? Well, the resolution is on our agenda. Okay. I and, didn't know that. And this is part and parcel to the discussion that would lead to a vote unless someone had a reason to table it. And that hasn't come up in the conversation, but we haven't finished the conversation. Okay. So I think that answers your question. Yeah, so Does it would any... basically be similar to like if a nonprofit had purchased the properties, now you're not allowed to charge them tax. So by virtue of passing the resolution, it would basically be saying the library is no longer going to be levying, you know, our due tax on this list of properties and everybody else will, will pick up the difference. Um, at the sake of sounding naive or ignorant, are you saying that the library has other properties than what the building is sitting on? The library? Yeah. No, no, I'm no, sorry. So, okay, so so maybe I phrased that poorly. So um, I think I basically what the resolution would be saying is effective the date of the resolution, the, Karen, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's eight properties um, within the, the taxing jurisdiction for the Austin Public Library will no longer be taxable by us as of this date. So we will no longer be collecting property taxes on these um, properties in the unincorporated town that um, have water infrastructure sitting on top of them no. as of the date of this resolution. So it has nothing no. to do with the library parcels. Thank can you I ask that. a question? Mm -hmm. Maddie, can I ask a question? Maddie and Karen. Currently, we have the resolution worded like this. Approval of exemption from local library taxes for village water properties. Does that accomplish what we're trying to do? Very much so. I, I think, I mean, it would, it would be up to you guys if you wanted more detail in there. I think for our purposes, it's perfect. Okay. Well, if there are no further questions or comments at this time, I would like to thank Maddie and Karen for attending in spite of the technical challenges. <laughs> and, and we hope to see you too on a regular basis because uh, your information is helpful and your background is certainly 
enlightening. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. I miss you all terribly. Can I just say something quickly? Can you hear me? Of course. Yeah. Um, it does, hi, it does say our assessor would need these resolutions in hand prior to taxable status date May 1st. So are we going to have to meet again to approve the resolution? Or are we still going to approve it as a library board? Or I guess I'm, it's a general question. Don't you need this in hand by May 1st? I think if, and I'll, I'll just speak as an outsider, I think if the board were inclined to pass it tonight, I think that would be excellent. We can okay. certainly provide you with supplemental information with the block and lot number to append sure. to the resolution after the fact. That is no problem. Okay. Well, Maddie and All Karen, right. thank you. If there are no other questions, uh, you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, but that's up to you. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you Hi. so much. Thank be you. well and safe, everybody. And thank, thank you both. For all yeah, the good work safe. that you do. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, we are now at the point of the meeting that uh, we should approve the prior meeting minutes. Uh, I hope everybody has access to this digitally. Uh, obviously, we did not send out hard copies. There was a lot of information in this packet this week for this meeting. And I believe everyone was present at the last meeting, which was uh, held on March 23rd. And it, you also should have had a chance to look at it previously because before it was submitted for approval at this meeting, it was submitted to you for review. So at this time, if there are any questions or comments on the previous meeting's minutes, we will handle those. Otherwise, I'll accept the motion to accept the meeting minutes from the March meeting and the second. So moved. Second. And all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any, any nays or abstentions? Who was, none? who was it? Who was it? I couldn't <laughs> tell who it was. <laughs> Well, I think it's unanimous. Ce Cecilia, Cecilia? Um, seconded, and Alice. Oh. Alice, okay. Made the motion. Okay, thank so, you. So um, we will. Um, I'm looking at the long, long minute, oh. and we can move on to the Karen uh, Larocafels. If you're ready, the director's report and the personnel report. Sure, I'm ready. Um, let me get to my document. Just one sec. There you go. Okay. Um, so as you all know, it's been a very interesting month. We went through some pretty significant transitions in a very small period of time. Um, I have to say that our buildings, there's some people who really need shout outs right now. Our buildings and grounds team are absolutely amazing. And Molly is going to be talking about that end of things in just a, a couple moments. Our department heads have been incredible at adapting to this change very quickly, getting their staff up to speed. They had some real challenges in helping staff be able to work from home and they, they dealt with it and took care of it. Um, and so I'm, I'm very thankful for them. Molly has been doing an amazing job keeping the building running, keeping the construction going um, and keeping her team working and focused. Mallory Marinaro has been communicating daily with our public um, and it was especially important during the time when things were changing so quickly and services were changing so qu quickly. And also Allison Robbins, who is our technology and training librarian, worked amazingly hard getting everyone the technology equipment and skills that they needed to be able to do what they needed to do. So it's, you know, we were, we're really very lucky. We have a great team. They did a lot of amazing work in a very short period of time. Um, we're still at the point, of course, as you know, that we're close to the public. Our buildings and grounds team continue to report on staggered shifts and everyone else is working from home. And you, you see in your daily emails from the library, all of the programming that's happening um, and the opportunities for digital resources that people have. And beyond that, we continue to work on things that you might not see. Our department heads are using this opportunity to get training out to staff members who need training on various things. Um, they're working on collection development, even though uh, we're not 
having books shipped to the library. We are um, making sure to fill up carts, which will be shipped to the library once we can do that. And, um, and lots of other good work. They, uh, the, the one thing I wanted to say too, was the, the Zoom phone system that we're using to bypass our old phone system has been really nice. Um, pay, we, we man it six days a week. Um, from 10 to 6, Monday through Friday, and 11 to 3 on Saturday. And um, it's really nice that patrons can call our library and get the help that they need. It's really nice that our staff can call out from the library um, to reach out to patrons. And one of the things that uh, was not in my report that we're going to start doing very soon is reaching out to patrons by phone who don't have email addresses in their library account and don't receive our email newsletter to see if there is um, any way that we can get them the information that they need and, and, um, and, go, and go from there with them. Um, Kathy, Bob, and Karen Giuliano have been amazing in the business office. Um, ADP has, the uh, paychecks have been going very smoothly. We're able to answer people's questions and get them the help that they need, our, our employees. And then Bob um, really did some magic for, for paying bills. <laughs> it, was, it was quite something I really <laughs> to do it. Um, and all of this while I was in quarantine, which posed a very significant challenge. Um, so I think those are the highlights. We submitted the annual report, finally a little late. I sent you all of the documenting information about the annual report, which I know is later on the agenda. And I just, oh, the big thing I just wanted to mention is that we're starting to have conversations within our library, within the larger group of the Westchester directors and across New York State as well about what it's going to look like when we open back up to the public. We have a lot of things to think about and there are an awful lot of unknowns. So planning for the unknown is really quite a challenge, but um, we're starting to do that work now. We have a meeting set with our, several of our key staff members on Wednesday, Wednesday? Yes, Molly, yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Um, where we're gonna be starting that work and then also on Wednesday, Wednesday morning, Molly and I will be meeting with the directors of the other larger libraries in Westchester County to have those discussions as well and to share ideas. And I've already been on a couple of conference calls with some of my fellow directors to start sharing ideas. We know that going back, we, you know, we can't just open up on day one and start doing everything that we used to do before. It's just not gonna fly. So we have a lot of things that we need to consider. We have to figure out you know, how we're gonna open back up. Is it gonna be limited hours? Are we gonna have staggered staff shifts? Are we gonna to have to limit the number of people in the building? How do we do that? How do we provide programs? So we have a lot to consider. Um, does anybody have any questions about that that I could try to answer? I don't have many answers right now. <laughs> no, there's a lot of activity going on and it's, it may be remote, yeah. But the reality is that it's not a short report considering you, you would uh, have health challenges and the library has That's challenges true. and you guys are doing a great job and the communications look great that come through in the emails. And uh, I thank you, everybody on, on the staff and everybody who's working hard for the job they're doing. Thank you. I wanted to uh, ask Molly to say a few things about what she's been working on because she's been keeping things going <laughs> building wise <laughs> yeah it's um thank you it's good to see everybody it's it really is isolating to be working at home but i've been fortunate i do get into the library building probably twice a week um i pick up the mail uh but i also check on other things going on in the building and the first thing i want to talk about is the boiler project this was really fascinating timing because you know we worked hard to get this project started and then right at the very beginning literally of getting it started you know we had to close the building <laughs> um and there were some concerns about whether or not they would be able to keep working that sort of thing but they have they've kept to a very tight schedule uh the only things that have ever slowed them down are materials that um, they haven't been able to get delivered on time. Um, we're also, we may be reporting a little bit of a holdup with Con Edison, 
but I'm, I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed on that one. Uh, the work is, I, I have to say, the work is beautiful. If you look at the pictures, you can see some of the extensive piping. Um, I can't wait to actually give you all a tour. <laughs> um, but one of the things I do want to point out is they're, they're always on time. They liaise with our staff beautifully. They leave their work area pristine. There are several places where they've had to cut through the wall. Um, and some of those wall areas are going to be in the cafe area. Uh, they've worked very hard, you know, being very precise, trying to put things in places where they'll be hidden. The work is all very clean. So I, I just can't say enough about the team, but also the progress of the work. You should feel really good about that. Um, and so I'm glad that even in these strange times, we're able to keep that completely on target. Um, our own staff have been working hard on taking advantage of having a building closed for an extensive period of time. We've stripped the floors. I sent those pictures. I wish I could show you what a shine was on those floors. <laughs> Uh, I know it doesn't seem like that big a deal, but to have the opportunity to really be able to strip and clean floors, not only the cafe and gallery area, but the hallway, our staff room, staff kitchen, we're do redoing the wood floors in the team room, redoing the children's program room, um, we've replaced some areas where the carpeting has been badly damaged. We're, uh, we've currently stripped all of the wood handrails in the building and we're getting ready to recoat them with a fresh coat of polyurethane. Uh, we've also, we've flipped over every single piece of furniture, chair, table, checked for um, bolts that are loose, uh, things that need to be repaired, done a lot of repairs, minor repairs in the restrooms, things like that. So uh, it's really given us an opportunity to work on some things that, you know, maybe we could keep going, but it was really nice to be able to take them to the next level. And the last thing I want to mention is that in our strategic planning and the building program that we worked on with the architect, we looked at some ways to make the mezzanine um, more inviting and um, take advantage of the space up there a little bit better. And to that end, we're actually moving some of the stacks that run all the way up to the edge where you look out over the Hudson we're actually pushing some of those back where we can so that the furniture can come more forward. That gives us an opportunity to see the patrons who are up there rather than having them in sort of isolated little cubby areas, giving them a beautiful view of the Hudson and also allowing us to take more advantage of space that is quieter versus space that you know is exposed to the team room noise that sort of thing so um, it does require quite a bit of emptying of shelves <laughs> and then repositioning of shelves something that would have been very difficult to do with the public um, in place so i'm really looking forward to showing you the finished shots we should be done with the move um, sometime later this week so uh, i can't thank the guys enough they also do a lot on the outside of the building You'd be amazed how many things people are still dropping off for us. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad they, they get around to the outside. They do check the book drops regularly um, and just check to make sure that the outside of the building is clean and secure. Uh, and they uh, are all observing great social distancing, always protective gear on, um, very respectful of each other and each other's safety. Uh, so that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Molly, I, I lost track. We had spoken about the cost for painting the theater. Is that um, like on the back burner now? Or? It is on the back burner, partly because the companies that were giving us bids for painting and carpeting and things like that, they're really non-essential companies. And they've basically, it's work that they've, you know, they've basically laid off people or have stopped doing any of that work. So it's kind of on hold until they can get back up and running. Okay, thank you. So that's something we can we oh, go ahead. when we start, um, you know, sort of moving forward. I'm sorry, I missed the first part. That's something that can be phased in, like you can be working with them. So when we get the green light, you know, we're not anywhere near stage one of Cuomo of the administration's plans, but that's something that we, could set out sort of at the very beginning of opening. Yeah, I keep staying in touch with all of them so that yeah. you know, they, they know we're, we're interested in them and we stay on their radar. 
We've been having a, a similar challenge with the um, security camera companies. We have the state grant, I mentioned it in my report, um, that we have to have finished and complete by June 30th, but Molly has been having a hard time getting, um, she, you know, she had companies chosen and in contact with before this happened, and now that's a bit of a challenge. So we're gonna keep on that, and I'm gonna be reaching out to, well, I've already reached out to the state librarian and our DLD rep and Sandy Galef, and hopefully they can pull some strings as far as extending the deadline of the grant so that we don't have a problem. Could I ask a couple of quick questions? Sure. Um, from of Molly, in terms of the boiler, boiler project, I can't remember the projected end date, and is that still on target? And when was that date for the I boiler it project? Was, it was June 30th. Oh, um, okay. They're still on target to complete. Oh, great. Um, and as long as you know, all the supplies are delivered and Con Edison meets, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as Con Edison comes and caps the gas line so they can finish the work on the gas line, um, that would be the only thing that's holding them up at this point. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. And then the question I had for either Karen or for you, Molly, was Karen had mentioned that we were gonna try to reach out to library patrons by phone because they may not have a library access email. How are you going to, just going to go through the phone book? No. How are you going to do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> phone books? <laughs> no. Um, we, can, we can pull a report from Evergreen of our oh. patrons who are adult patrons who do not have email addresses in their oh, account. Oh, okay. Okay. And we can use that list. So it's a library user list. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Molly, um, when you had met, I think with the Buildings and Grounds Committee, you had mentioned a number of small projects you would like to have sort of in your hopper in the future. Um, one of them was to create small conference rooms in addition to repainting and recarpeting the theater. And then there was possibly setting up the downstairs area for the, um, the teens, I think. All of those things I thought were just fabulous ideas and I can see where they will be in the future when everybody's up and running again. Um, do you have a potential timeline or funding discussion we'll be having about that eventually? Or is uh, that so far in the future you're not thinking about it? A little, <laughs> a little bit of both. I would say right now, especially with the uncertainty of yeah. where things are and how they're going, it would be hard for Karen and I to sort of pinpoint that. I will say it remains a priority for both of us and the whole building. So, um, you know, as soon as we possibly can hit the ground running with those projects, we will. Um, and the first part of that, of course, will be how much does it cost and how are we gonna pay for it? <laughs> right, and you'll all remember, well, maybe some of you weren't here when we got the, we have, we got two $50,000 pilot grants um, separately a few years ago that we still have to decide what we're doing with. So, um, you know, as far as funding goes, if that's a priority of the boards, there is that money. Um, it's been sitting there since we got it. And we also should try to tie in any strategic plan with any of these uh, changes to the physical building. Mm -hmm. But so. I don't think we ever had a board discussion about all of this. I think it was just in the committee. So it might be. Yeah, I think uh, that actually sort of happened right before we, yeah. we went to our full Corona crisis. Right. Right. But I believe, I look very much forward to this part being over and us being able to go back to um, working on our building, especially the, um, a lot of the work on the theater. It's such a showpiece for us and part of our library's identity. Um, and the time is really right to give it a facelift. Yeah, for sure. Are there any other questions or comments for Molly or Karen at this time? Thank you for all the pictures. Oh, yeah. Sure. I hope to provide more that are more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and do a selfie. You should be in the picture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can move on to committee reports. Uh, first being the president's report. I'll briefly just bring you up to date. I've been in contact with WLS, the Westchester Library Services uh, president over the last couple of weeks. And she asked 
what we're doing as far as uh, having our meetings and our agendas. And I assured her we were staying on schedule and we keep everything on the agenda. Actually, the only thing we table with regularity is the strategic plan because it does include outside consultants. And I asked her if the WLS is still functioning because we don't hear much. Are they furloughed staff, I asked in an email, or are they fully staffed? I felt that it's an opportunity for the WLS to reach out not only to the directors, but to trustees to let us know what they're doing and what they're planning to do when things turn back to normal. And I made the point that if the WLS is not available and proactive during a crisis, when would they choose to be proactive? And I mentioned that Karen was fighting exposure to this virus as well. And the response I got was, sorry to hear that Karen is not well. I hope she's making good progress. Work at WLS continues and we're reviewing the audits. And Terry will be sending a communication soon. Just wanted to let everybody know what the thinking was at WLS. Did, did you talk with anyone there, Matt, or just yes, email? Yes, uh, Susan Murdoch. Susan Murdoch. Is she the, she's the president of WLS. She's the president. Yep. Okay. And the, the general, well, I don't want to add commentary to it, but you get the, the gist of their efforts and their emphasis, and it is not proactive, and there's no such thing as outreach in their vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. I just thought at this time they could provide resources for us, or I don't know, even, a, a, you know, we're, we're rooting for you guys to get better. I don't know. Um, is there anything from policy and bylaws and personnel committee at this time? No. Nothing. No, there's no meetings. Nothing from finance. There have been no meetings. Fields and grounds. We just had a great report. Uh, the foundation committee will have to, um, when things get back to normal, pick that up again. But we do have some interesting resolutions. Uh, well, number Matt, 45. Bow out for your resolutions. Before we go to resolutions. Oh, okay. Hi, so, Molly. Hi. Oh, bye. Um, I just want to um, make com a comment about the report that we receive all every time from Karen and all the other um, lead department. staff of the different departments. I really, really appreciate it. And you can really get a sense of the individuals who are writing for this report. Um, their voices come through very strong and it's so detailed. And I, being new to the board, um, one of the questions I have is it is also very time consuming, isn't it, to compose all of this? Uh, I think this one was like 17 pages long and I thought- Was it I have, long? <laughs> yeah, it was I 17 have, pages. <laughs> yeah, I have to set aside time to sit and really right. read and understand everything. Not that I mind setting aside the time, but I'm just thinking of the time that it takes everybody to compose this report. Um, well, I can say it's time that they would be spending anyway, because I require uh, monthly reports of my staff. So essentially what you're getting is the same as what I would ask of them on a regular, you know, just normally. Thank you. That's all I need. I, I also, I also want to say, um, just for my own sake, when I write my report, as as much as when it comes time to write my report, I think, oh, I've got to write my report again. It's actually extremely helpful to me to sort of go back and reflect over the previous month because so often we're all just caught up in doing, 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 and, you know, the daily stuff, especially right now when everything is, you know, when routine has just gone out the window, that it's very helpful to me to sort of put things into perspective. And that's a really good time for me to put things in perspective and, and remember the big picture and, um, and that kind of thing. So it's helpful from the workers standpoint as well. Thank you. That helps me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, this is Shandi. I wanted to also um, revisit because as by reading through the report, um, the reading, the report, about the multicultural, um, I'm sorry, what, what is the title? Multicultural? Cultural Program Specialist. Program Specialist, yes. 
um, because even as I, I, I read the report was much more detailed this time than in the past, mm. but it doesn't seem like it's multicultural. It seems more like a um, liaison to the Hispanic Latino community. That's what it seems like. So I don't know if maybe that's a more accurate um, picture of what she's doing, but it's, it still doesn't seem to me as though I ever see anything that is beyond that particular community. And so just saying maybe at some point um, we can have a conversation about that again because I, I, I just don't see it. And so it, it makes me wonder, okay, so is somebody else doing that job that should be done by her? Or is the, and you know, I don't want to assume or, or say anything like nothing's happening because I don't believe that. But I don't see the connection or under her um, leadership how those things are happening. Well, that requires have... follow up. Yeah, right. yeah. We can, we can have that discussion. Um, I'm, that probably would be a good discussion perhaps for the personnel committee to start with. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right way to approach it. I'm just throwing it out there. Well, it's not the first time the, the question yeah. came up as to what the, uh, the job description is for that position. So I think I would agree that it makes sense for the committee to, to start the groundwork. And then if okay. there's any recommendation or information to be brought to the board, we can do that as soon as possible, but it'll definitely be on the agenda. Okay. Are there any other uh, items it could be uh, new or old business before we proceed to resolutions or any comments. Well, I just had a quick question. Is Althema okay? And she couldn't join us tonight? Well, I saw She's her on. earlier. Althema's here. I'm Where? here. Where? Oh, oh, hi. I don't see you. Okay. Speak a I don't see you either. Oh, okay. Happy there you are. Here. There you are at the end of the... Okay. So, Karen, I had a quick question on the, the budget vote. Um, on the school website, they have their upcoming budget meetings listed and the budget vote for May 19th. Is that inaccurate? It's got to be inaccurate. Oh, Kathy, okay. do you have an answer to that? Wait, let me unmute you. Okay. It's inaccurate. Illy will keep us posted. As soon as she finds out, she will share it with us. Oh. That's all that we need to know because she has to uh, publish the legal notice. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know who put that on there, but. <laughs> and left it on there. Yes. And left it on yes. there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not a problem. So we are up to resolutions. If there are no other comments or questions at this time, the first resolution, number 45, is for the approval of the services of Valdeseri and Costa for the auditing, audit work that they do and for the audit of the fiscal year ending June 30, 2020. So moved. And oh. Accept that. If there's a second. I'll second. Okay. And all in favor, vote by saying aye, please. Aye. Aye. Are there any, aye. Uh, any nays or abstentions at this time? That will be accepted unanimously. We'll move on to resolution mm -hmm. 47, approval of the 2019 annual report. Uh, there's a lot of information. I know it came out on Friday. I, for one, didn't go through it as much as I would have liked to. I don't have any questions. Karen, did you have any highlights you wanted to bring to our attention for Resolution um, 47? I would just say uh, to take a look at the narrative that I put together, um, because I think that's probably the easiest way to understand it, and that talks about the program and service changes. I will, and I said this in the narrative, um, the numbers that I reported out for this one really need to be taken with a grain of salt, um, some of them, because we had a large migration that happened. We had some major technology issues that impacted our service. And we also, well, this number you shouldn't take with a grain of salt. The thing that you should take with a grain of salt is the year to year change for the programs. Um, this was the first year that we uh, really made an effort to accurately count our programs and our program attendance. And in previous years, it was sort of slapdash and all over the place and last minute putting things together. So um, while I do think that we're still undercounting this year a bit, 
um, I think that we're, it, it's a more accurate reflection of what we've, of what we're actually doing, but comparing it year to year is going to be a little off. When I file next year's report, I think you'll have a better year to year comparison. I, I had a couple questions for you, Karen, having gone sure. through it. Um, in 3.7, I wanted to know if we, I mean, we said we do not have a disaster plan. What is a disaster plan? Is that, that's not what we're talking what about. What we're living through. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> um, a disaster plan is, it, it usually encompasses a number of different things, like what happens if a hurricane hits the building, what happens if you have a fire, or water damage or a car drives through your front doors, which has happened to several libraries, unfortunately, um, a pandemic. It's how do you, whoops, I'm throwing my pen around. It's how do you, I see it's such a disaster. <laughs> it's how you respond to that situation immediately um, and also how you come back, um, come back from it. Okay. And it's, it's not a plan that we have. It was a plan that I always said to myself, Oh, we should have that. And then I don't have time to work on it. And then when we get a pandemic, <laughs> I just have to do it. Well, maybe that's one of those we could put into our policy yes. uh, policy list, right? Didn't we also, and, um, that was something where there was some waiver you were waiting for, PERPA or Karen? Oh, no. That's something different. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and I've been following up with, that was PERB. Um, Perm. for their report they did a like an osha report for us okay. well they did an osha study for us a number of years ago and we're supposed to get us a report and unfortunately they've had so many personnel changes that we never got our report um there was another one i think 3.76 um it had to do with i believe the esl and it wanted to know um we only listed one collaborator which is mm -hmm. literacy new york Mm -hmm. um, so that the school district really doesn't collaborate with us or this was for the adult literacy i believe you know what i have to go look it up again i didn't write that down what it was adult literacy or children's literacy but i was really surprised that we didn't have other collaborators and i was wondering if you wanted to have other collaborators what about boses it would be nice to have other collaborators absolutely okay so that's something in the future, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And that I believe that particular part was is particularly adult literacy, okay. because and, the early literacy is someplace else in the report. Okay, and Alice Bosey's was listed along with the public school districts. Okay, yeah. So, if there are no other comments or questions, we will move to the uh, approval or rejection of resolution forty-seven, the approval of the two thousand nineteen annual report. I'll entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Time. And a second. Second. And all, all in favor, please vote by indicating aye. 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 And if there are any objections or abstentions, please state them at this time. And it carries. Move on to resolution 48. Very timely because we do need a general contractor role to be filled for the um, installation of the boiler system. Resolution 48 is entitled the approval of the OLA additional services. That's uh, the engineer that we've been using. And the services are stipulated in the document that's been submitted to the board through Karen um, with a proposal in the amount of $1,880. Karen, my understanding is this will carry us through the installation and every in to up right. and running yes so in the initial proposal that uh, was agreed to in the fall it must have been the fall um, we had put in for or ola had budgeted for us attending a certain number of construction meetings and we are finding as we go along because we don't have a general construction manager for this project that we need them to attend every construction meeting and to look over every um, purchasing document for us to make sure that, um, you know, clean air is providing the correct equipment. I'll give you an example. They, um, they were taught clean air wanted to make some substitutions for some of the materials. 
and some of the substitutions were reasonable and some of the substitutions were not a good idea, but I don't have the expertise to be able to make that decision and um, the gentleman from OLA do. So this is for them attending um, the rest of the construction meetings to the end of the project and going over the, um, the schedules and the, um, what's the word I want? This, the equipment submissions and that kind of thing. Okay, are there any other comments or questions at this time? For that resolution, could we just add after o OLA that it's actually consulting engineers with their address just so that we have that because it's on their letter, but in terms of our resolution, it doesn't really say who a OLA is. And I know that historically, when people are trying to go back, it's just nice to know who OLA is. Acronyms are sometimes confusing. So can we just add that, just a clarifying in our resolution. It, that makes sense to add the okay. uh, proper name. And, okay. and the, the April 16th document um, with the proposal will be attached to the minutes for the record. Okay, good. That, that makes sense. Yep. Well, if there's nothing on LSUN 48, we'll move to resolution 49, approval of exemption from local library taxes, village water properties, as the argument was presented to us by Maddie Zaches and uh, Karen DeTori. Um, it seems like the most equitable approach to reduce the impact um, or to spread the impact of any increase in taxes and increases in the water um, costs uh, across the board to everyone that we accept resolution 49. And as it is resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the exemption of all village of Ossing water properties from local library taxes. And any questions or comments at this time? Uh, yes, Matt, I have a comment. Um, first of all, I, um, I felt really put upon by having Maddie come talk about this today and they're asking for this May 1st. Yeah. This is not something that they just came up with. This is something that they've been, you know, moving the, the things around the table for a while. Um, what I also kind of resent was her boss also not being the one that was explaining it to us and having Maddie come explain it to us for some reason as if she were talking us into it. I didn't serve with Maddie that long, so I don't know her like that. But um, what I heard, which I have experienced in the past, is, um, is a political argument in terms of who should pay the most amount, which communities don't want to pay, and so how do you um, shush that around so that they don't um, get upset when it's um, time for elections? So. What I heard was that they did not want it to affect um, property taxes and instead wanted it to affect however much people pay for water tax, you know, for their water bill. And it made me uh, uh, initially think of, of, of Flint. So you're going to make sure that the people, certainly the people that use the water absolutely should pay for it. But what does it have to do, and maybe somebody else on the board understood it differently than I did, but w when she was talking about poorer communities, who was she talking about? Because poor communities that are property owners, I don't understand what she was saying. Because if it's a poor community, they don't own their house in the village. Right. So I don't understand her, her logic and who is she saying that's really going to pay for this? So would you, are you open to having a further discussion maybe at a committee level, uh, another Zoom meeting that we bring the, these issues up? And, or are you suggesting that we shouldn't be voting on it tonight or? I'm just, no, I'm, I'm kind of, I, what I'm trying to get is a, the understanding of, of other board members, because if they understand it differently than me and they can yeah. articulate that, then maybe I agree with what they're saying. 
I really think Shandy, Shandy makes really good points here. And I didn't see the spreadsheet. So after we get out of the meeting, I was going to go try to find Maddie's spreadsheet. Has anyone read that spreadsheet? Do they understand it more fully? I, I looked at the spreadsheets, but, you know, they, you know, they didn't make any more sense than what she was saying. Yeah. The spreadsheets were, were clearly designed to um, graphically depict how the changes in the cost of water would occur if the if it was on the tax rolls or if it wasn't on the tax rolls. Ultimately, it, it didn't give the whole story the way Maddie presented it. And Shandi, I'll say that I it didn't cross my mind that Maddie talking tonight would be um, appear heavy handed. So that wasn't the intention. But having brought that to the forefront, um, I, I don't know, I'm not going to put words in anyone's mouth, but I don't know if it might make sense to push this back to either a finance committee to review again and bring up these issues because we don't have the answers. Last time we yes. spoke about this a couple of years ago, Kieran, were you the director at the time? Yes, I was. I, it, the same thing mm -hmm. happened where they brought it to us and it was yeah. like a deadline and they needed yep. to vote by a certain day and the school district hadn't had the time to vote on it, but they wanted us right. to do it anyway. Yep. And, we such right. a play. and then and the other thing, Alice, is the original, she also used the word endorsement. And I was like, endorsement? What are you, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, Alice, I'm sure you remember, uh, you know, the town, uh, Cortland, um, I'm sorry, not Cortland, Yorktown and the unincorporated area, they never want to pay for anything. They always want to be exempted from something. And so, again, I see it as more of a political question than, you know, like the, we're doing something to protect the library. Uh, that's not what it sounds like to me. I don't. I would be um, more than fine tabling it because it it feels like we're always a last minute thought on this <laughs> issue, and you know they come to us and they're like, "Oh, you need to do this," and um, the village and the town boards and the school board haven't even voted on it yet, have they? No, the uh, the school board meeting tonight. The school board has something tonight. Um, else I'd on the like board to look at the I'm sorry, Shandi. I said if everybody else on the board understands it differently. I um I would like to look oh. at it more. What would you say, Alfima? I don't know who who that was. That was Alfima. She said she wants to understand it more, right, Alfima? Oh. I think her internet. No, she's be. muted. Body. Uh, let me unmute. I don't okay. know. My internet okay. is going in and out. Um, Doubt again. Yeah, she get, keeps getting muted. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sort of. Um, I'd like to uh, look at it more. I didn't totally understand everything. Alfimo, whose picture is behind you? That's my high school picture. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cecilia, I, I'm just curious if you had any comments or you, you wanted to share I don't your thoughts. disagree with what Shandy was saying. Okay. Yeah. I, I think the way I processed what I was hearing is similar, is aligned with her understanding. Okay. All right. That, that's appreciated. I like, yeah, I would like to hold off too because I just don't understand why we're making this move right now. I, even after asking a second time for an explanation, it didn't make sense to me. Okay, I would. Um, I think, can I, can I just speak to that? Of course. Of course. <clears throat> In the letter that was sent to us, it says it would be advisable to ask the taxing entities, um, school district, town of Austin, Austin Library to pass board resolutions exempting all village of Austin water properties from local taxes. Our assessor will need these resolutions in hand prior to taxable status date May 1st. Since our state taxes have, you know, been pushed back, that's probably it. But I think that they had, like what Shandi said, they haven't gotten their act together and this is typical. And I, ha I was confused, but I thought that everyone else probably understood it better than me. But I think Shandi really explained it. I mean, brought up good points and we need to follow up on them, I think. I don't think 
we as a board were well prepped. And what was presented to us was a nice organized little argument. And there's absolutely no reason why we can't take the time to review it. And okay. I'm going to table it unless there is an objection. And well, we Karen, did to... you understand it better, Karen? Um, I understood what she was saying, yeah. but I don't necessarily, I don't, as the director, I don't like things being thrown at me to throw at you at sure. the last minute. Sure. So that, that did bother me. And I would rather that the board had the time to actually review the information yeah. um, before you make a decision. I do have uh, one question. If the board tables it, what would be the best next step then? Because I know that they're going to ask. The committee, the, I think finance yeah. should um, should have a meeting finance. as soon as feasible, yeah. a okay. Zoom meeting, and come to the board with a recommendation. And okay. I, I want to take responsibility for um, having Maddie come to this meeting because I, I was lured into the deadline and it, it made sense yeah. to have her come to the meeting. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 I think she, you know, I don't have any problem with that, Matt, at all. I'm just, I'm just asking questions because I, I'm, I listened very carefully. I read the letter. I looked at the, the, uh, the uh, Excel spreadsheets, and it still was, you know, I can only go on my past experiences with, you know, yeah. folks kind of coming at the last minute and putting us under pressure in a way right. that, you know, what's the, what's the rush? Shandi, I knew you were listening because you weren't speaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Matt. <laughs> so we have officially tabled resolution 49 for tonight. So act. Well, at, well, we have to vote. <laughs> act. Uh, Plus you, you didn't wanna, vote on 48. Yeah, we didn't vote on 48. Is that important? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. oh, OLA additional <laughs> services. Oh, OK. Well, I will entertain a motion to accept Resolution 48, approval of the OLA additional services at this time. Approved. So moved. And, and a second. And all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any uh, objections or abstentions? There being none, it is accepted. Do you want to vote on 49 or we could just table that? table. It's table. Oh, good. Okay. And Althema, you're the chair of finance, yes? I thought we had yeah. to vote to table. Do we not have to vote to table? No, you don't have to vote to table. No. Okay. Nope. So we'll be in touch, um, Althema, about setting a meeting. Okay, yeah. yeah. Who's on the finance committee? I am. Lucinda is. Althema, Matt. Althema, Matt, and Lucinda, I think. is There's nobody else, right? I think I don't that... Have my list I think if the chair is, finds it appropriate, we could open it to any other board members that'd like to participate. It's probably that sounds not good. a bad idea. Yeah. Maybe we should well, have a special though. meeting instead of a finance I think that's a good idea. Just don't have special a quorum, meeting. please. Yeah, I think we should have a special meeting. We should call a special meeting. Yeah, if you have more than four, it's a quorum. A special meeting would be better? I think right. so. Just call it that so that if you have a quorum, it's a right. Yeah. And then we just have to we'll post it on the website and um, special and discussion, yeah, about this issue. Okay. So instead Matt, of a fine. Have you talked to Ray about this? No. So I think it would be good to talk to a Ray to Ray. Yeah. Sure. Ray has his own problems. He don't need to talk to the library board. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, would it be helpful if for the special meeting we had somebody from the village to talk about why this is important or no would the board rather have the discussion i don't think you help? should they made their they made their pitch okay yeah yeah Well, in that case, we're up to the point of old business. The first item on the agenda is a long range strategic plan. Karen, unless you have any insight that I don't know about, I think that's something we're going to have to table. Yeah, no, I, um, I connected again with one of the, uh, this last week now has been my reconnecting with all the people that I haven't spoken to in a long time while I was sick. So I'll be picking that up again. And are you ready to share your secret with us, how you beat the 
COVID-19 yeah. virus? The COVID? <laughs> Actually, I'm on hydroxychloroquine. Ah. Mm -hmm. I was already ah. on hydroxychloroquine. I don't know if that helped at all. <laughs> okay. You were sick for a long time, though, Karen. I, yeah. It was four weeks. Yeah. Four to four and a half. Wow. And the next item on the old business agenda is the WLS IT. Um, I, I can't imagine there's anything to discuss on that because it, is it operating? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can do what we can do from home. Right, right. And uh, um, I, was, I was curious about um, the approach the directors are taking that you referred to about meeting and planning for the way the world will look differently after this uh, virus has passed us. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say uh, that we're going to rely on you to keep us informed because it sounds rather exciting. And, and I think there'll be a lot of uh, ideas that may not have occurred to us that hopefully you folks will come up with. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be really exciting. I'm kind of, I, I look at the silver lining of everything and um, I really think that this is interesting because it's causing us to reevaluate and look at everything we do and look at it differently from a different lens. So it's gonna be as frustrating as it is and exhausting, mm -hmm. it's gonna be kind of cool too. And that's what Cuomo yes. keeps referring to in his, you know, fireside chats <laughs> daily. <laughs> And yeah. um, I also want to say that WLS has just showed such a complete lack of leadership on this at every level. And it would seem to me that they would be convening the libraries on best practices and strategies and reentry. And well, actually, it's funny that you say that because <laughs> we were hearing nothing, nothing, nothing. And I was very sick. I, I was, you know, as president of the PLDA. Um, I really wasn't in contact with anybody. And then finally, I sort of emerged last week and reached out to all my PLDA um, board members and my colleagues who I'm close with. And, and, and we were all saying, no, we need to plan for this. There's nothing coming out from um, WLS. And as soon as I planned a PLDA meeting, all of a sudden, all, this, all, the, all these other meetings were planned by WLS for us with all these you know, surveys and things like that. So maybe they're stepping up. I don't know. It's yet to be seen. I mean, I think that we don't know when we're going to be moving forward, but we certainly need to start proactively planning because Absolutely. we can see that we will get out of this at some point. And I also, um, when I spoke to you earlier today, Karen, the document that the village is preparing, um, that shared document, mm -hmm. um, I need content from the library for that document. Oh, that's okay. That's the one that you meant we talked about yesterday. Yeah, okay. you were gonna give me like, because there are these different phone numbers, because like, currently, they just have the website What for okay. the rest of the board, the village is trying to put together a shared resource Google Doc um, of all the organizations within Ossining and the services that they're offering. Um, so they basically just said the library and they referred people to the website, but that doesn't seem at all informative at, at, at any level because you have all these other phone, you have the other phone right. system and all this Not other adequate. stuff. So if you could come up with whatever the spiel is that we're going to put yeah. in the document, I'll plop it in for us. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Did you, um, did Maddie share with me that document or did you share with me that document? I must have lost track of I, it, that email. I did not share it with you. I'll send you an email with the link right now. If you don't mind, that'll just prompt my memory to do it. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. She put it in the, um, in, the, in the notes of the superintendent meeting today, but um, it was so busy probably you didn't notice it. So I'll send it to you okay. right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the next item is the budget letter. We have a copy of that in the packet that is um, sent to the community and signed by the president and the director. Uh, Karen, all those bold, um, wor the words in bold don't have to be in bold. Well, I wondered, <laughs> but I <laughs> said, hey, I'll leave it. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure why they were in bold, Matt. I put them in bold when I sent the corrections to you. I didn't think oh, it Oh, okay. Oh, I'll okay. fix it. 
And the uh, next agenda item is new business, April 21, tomorrow, National Library Workers' Day. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Normally, we do a tray of cookies. Normally, I arrange for some sort of interesting swag for each of the library staff members. Obviously, we can't do that this year, or we can't do that now. Now. We can do it later. later. But um, I usually also send them a nicely worded thank you email. I've been sending them lots send of nicely worded thank you emails. This maybe an email with a certificate they can print. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a virtual certificate. So I'll send them nice words tomorrow, and um, we have, we'll have to follow up with actual stuff at another time. All right. Well, I think that we, we should, when we reopen, we should do something for the entire staff. Yes. Totally agree. You know, do something on a Wednesday morning so that everyone... Um, you know, can come and, and we should do something because that, you know, to appreciate them, to help people sort of collectively talk and process, to show the board's gratitude mm -hmm. for what they're doing. Um, you know, we need to do that. Yep. Good idea. You know, related to that, Karen, um, I know you had to lay off the part-time workers. And so our library director is going to be discussing that in terms of bringing back Part yes, yeah. but we did not lay off our part-time no workers. Oh, I thought all, you had. Mm -mm. No. All of our part-timers, with the exception of the buildings and grounds staff, are working from home. We did, oh. uh, we did oh. unschedule the pages, so none of our pages are working right now. Okay, it was but, pages then. Okay. Yes, um, but our part-timers are still doing work from home, and if okay. they choose not to do that, then they're not being paid. Oh, okay. But yes, Thank some you. libraries did um, lay off part-time staff. Okay, yeah. Stephen is yeah. working, right? Stephen is working. He's a page, but he's buildings and grounds, and we need his work. Yeah, yeah. And the second item under new business, the water treatment taxable status has been handled. The third item, the OLA additional service proposal has been handled. Handled. And the annual meeting has been Table. resolved. No. Uh, well, I just want to, can I just say about the annual meeting, I'm, I'm hoping that you will agree that not having the annual meeting in June is a good idea, and that perhaps we have it in September. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good you're to an, me. You're an optimist. <laughs> have little t shirts. Oh, with they, the can't, new they can't keep us in the houses forever. Come on. They can't do that. <laughs> Please, no. Now, we do have, um, I, I don't believe there's any public members attending the meetings, so we don't need a public comment. But, Karen, we do need a brief executive session. Brief, yes. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to um, end the current meeting. No and, move. Stop the video. And the second. Stop. All in Alice, favor? Alice, that was you? That was me. Yes. Okay. Aye. So Who we're else? moving into uh, executive session at Cecilia. this time. Okay. To record. I'm recording. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting at this time. And a second. So moved. Second. 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 And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. I appreciate yeah. your effort. I appreciate Thank your you, everybody. Thank you. Well, thanks, night. everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Stay well. Stay well. Bye. <laughs>